Welcome to WO50 Podcast, Women Over 50 Embody Wisdom and Wellness. And now we embody meditation and relaxation too. We just finished recording some meditation. So that's why Eddie's voice is very mellow and quiet. Yes, it's mellow. My eyes are really blue. They, get they really blue are. When I meditate. Yeah. <laughs> So this is our meditation for the holidays episode where we start to uh, talk about where to start with meditation and mindfulness and some apps. We recommend some apps. And then at the end of our little chat where we share all about meditation, we actually walked us through some beautiful guided meditations. Yes. Thank you. We did two five minute ones and one 10 minute one. And so you can just do those on their own. You can mark those on their own, or you can, um, I'm going to also put little snippets on YouTube of just the meditations too, if you need those over the holidays, because we all need a break or sometimes we just need a minute. Just, yes. And just be regular. (laughs) And be regular (laughs) with your meditation practice. Yes. We talk about that, the importance of that. So thank you, Eddie, for, for talking about my favorite topic of meditation. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Ken. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. (laughs) Um, So we're going to talk today about um, meditations for the holidays. And we're going to end this episode with uh, a couple of different meditations. We were talking about maybe doing two different five-minute meditations and a 10-minute guided meditation. And, um, but we're going to discuss our meditation journeys now and our recommendations on like where to start and what apps are good and what I like about the apps or don't like about the apps. So, um, where you might've heard on the episode before, I'm sure we've mentioned this, that I am the meditation girl. I learned how to meditate in my twenties and it cured a, uh, three year long struggle with a very difficult, painful stomach ulcer. And it literally cured my stomach ulcer overnight when I learned transcendental meditation. That's where I started on my journey in my 20s. And um, of course, I became an evangelist when I learned how to do this meditation because I did like a 30-day silent retreat, like within six months, this is all in my 20s. And I became quite an evangelist and wanted everybody to meditate around me, including my best friend, Eddie, who was already a, a wonderful naturopathic doctor and who'd done her, had her journey with yoga and meditation. And the more I wanted her to meditate, the less she wanted to meditate. <laughs> is yes, that about sum it up? I was, yeah, because <laughs> I was on my journey and, oh, Corinne was so passionate about it, just as <laughs> passionate I was on, okay, we got to eat this way and we got to, and, but we were doing our, our thing, right? This, this is what we were doing in our twenties and, um, and into our thirties. And, and it's funny because she became the amazing meditation teacher, you know, guru to the, to the stars with meditation and yoga. And I was with it with food and health and wellness, but I really wanted to meditate. And I just thought sitting quiet for a minute was, was good or a walk in nature was good or fishing. Like, like a lot of people that say, to me, oh, you know, I meditate, you know, I just, I find when I go on the beach, I meditate and I lay down by the ocean and, and I'm like, that sounded good to me too. Even when we went to the Bahamas together, we were, I think we went down with Sony music, Sony records and, uh, and, and we just land there and and we get to the hotel room and she goes, I'm going to meditate now for, I'm like, you're going to meditate. For an hour or two. For for an hour. For how long? She said an hour. I'm like an hour. Well, I'm gone to the beach for an hour. I'll come back and do about five or 10, you know, anyway. But now, oh, it's what I need. And we'll talk more about that because it's what I do. And it's just part of breathing for me now. Yeah. So what made the shift for you? What, so it was it was you not valuing it and finding it important that you needed to do in your life. So when did that switch happen for you? I think it was adding one more thing to what I was having to do in Raising life. Raising your child and having your yeah, business. And, and, yeah, and all that and the business. And, and, and it just seemed like there was so much on my plate. And to stop, you know, there was no time, right? No time to stop, to meditate. There was always something to fill that little spot. And then, um, then when I started to go through, yeah, troubled times and, um, my marriage was falling apart and my divorce and all that. And 
working through that, I went to, a, um, I think I went to the yoga retreat center and I started to meditate and I would call you, Corinne, and I would say, Corinne, I'm really meditating now. Like I'm going like definitely an hour, sometimes two hours a day. And Corinne <laughs> goes, um, that's called escaping. I was like, <laughs> no, that's meditating. And then that shifted because that, you know, I think it's what it was the process I think I had to go through to get to where I am now, where my meditation is like a lining up of the marbles. You know, that's what it feels like to me. It's like thoughts yes. are marbles and you the bucket, you throw it up in the air. And instead of scrambling to see what marble I'm going to grab first to go and do, I meditate and it seems to line up. Makes sense? <laughs> that's great. I love okay. it. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I'm scrambling the marbles of Eddie's brain. <laughs> yeah. There's so much in there, right? <laughs> That's awesome. And for me, what it does for me these days is it is a deep, 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 deep rest for my body. You know, it's in my mind. It's like, it's like, I feel like, you know, in the morning, you know, I'm already rested. So my morning meditation is more like, and this is what they say in meditation too, it's kind of getting rid of accumulated stress from my lifetime. And then the afternoon is really, it's the hardest thing for me as a meditation teacher to get people to do is that second meditation, especially young people, because they're on a roll and they want to do just like what Eddie was talking about. The last thing you want to do in the afternoon is stop your, your roll and start meditating. But it's really, I feel a very important because it, because there's so much input that we have. Think about all the input we have, especially if you're over 50 listening to this, even if you're over 40 or even over 35, it's like you, life is very different than when you were a teenager in your twenties, right? I remember in my twenties, I'd have to go home to listen to my answering machine. Um, so I didn't have a cell phone, you know, for another 20 years. And so we have so much coming at us and everything is so immediate. And it was so much information, our brains and our physiologies definitely we need the rest. Like that's for sure. So the afternoon meditation is so wonderful because it gives you that rest. And then you'll have a whole evening of, um, of enjoyment then to eat and hopefully you don't use it to work, but you'll have a whole evening to enjoy your family or enjoy your alone time or your creativity or whatever it is. If you just take that time to meditate at four or five or six o'clock before your evening starts. And at the end of your day, right around that coffee time, when you tend to get that dip that where people want caffeine is right when you should meditate or when you want to take a nap. And I always much prefer meditation to a nap because a nap kind of makes you feel groggy afterward. And even if you fall asleep in your meditation in the afternoon, which is you pretty common because people are tired and meditation just shows you what's already there. Mm -hmm. And so you will, um, might fall asleep, but you're still getting the benefits. It's different than just because intentions are powerful. So if your intention is to meditate and you sleep, -itate, half meditate, half sleep, you'll still feel really clear and way better than a, than a nap afterwards. And I always think too, and this got clearer and clearer as I meditate more and more. But anytime, you know, there's a conundrum or there's something you're trying to resolve or, you know, you're really overthinking it. It's amazing. Like you come out of meditation and the answer's there. You know, it's it's almost like, oh, wow, I cleared the cobwebs. You give, you're giving yourself time to just kind of clear the weeds or the cobwebs. And because the, the answer's there is just we don't stop sometimes to, to, to hear it. Because <laughs> typically our creative solutions don't happen at the drawing board. Like Edison didn't invent the kite when he, the electricity, when he was at the drawing board, he invented it when he was flying the kite. Think of how many creative ideas when you have, when you're in the shower, you're taking a bath or you're walking, you're not mm -hmm. trying to come up with it. You're letting go. So in meditation, you're letting go. You can think about you know, your questions, sometimes that's a technique to do before you meditate and they might visit you, but you don't like meditate on a question that you have. You're just giving your brain a deep, 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 your physiology, a deep rest, creating space for inspiration. So even the word inspiration, inspire, aspire is spaciousness, is breath. Insp inspiration comes from the root word, uh, you know, is to aspire to for your breathing. So you give yourself space you organize your marbles, you 
create, you clear out the cobwebs and then your creative solution literally seems to come out of nowhere. So, so actually I was telling a young lady the other day, who's um, a business person. One of my new clients is young lady in the finance world. And she, um, I was telling her, you know, that, that about this thing that I was saying about creative solutions, you know, happening when you have, you know, more rest and more space and not trying to come up with something. And also I was telling her that, that my business people over the years are, were always my best clients, like the president of Sony and the president of RCA music, when they used to have those record labels here in Nashville, they were all my clients and they were always way better than the artists because they were already disciplined people. And they knew that if something worked, they would do it. And so, so it's really, once you, you know, sort of learn a few things about meditation the it's that you you understand that the discipline to do it as Eddie talked about even at the beginning of the podcast is it was her desire to do it and the discipline to sit and do it and make her valuing it that was getting in the way it wasn't that she didn't like meditating or or didn't you know found it difficult she just wasn't making the time for it and so that's that's what part of a big part of my job is to helping people to value meditation and to make the time for it and to realize it's not that difficult and when you realize you're over 50 and the science behind meditating now is huge because it says how amazing it is for the brain, the parts of the brain that improve, right? The, you know, there's areas that really click in the, the, the functions, get, you know, their power, the powers turned on to them. And so yeah. the prevention of dementias and Alzheimer's and in, in our, um, and our movement towards, you know, sharpening the tools. Yep. Absolutely. Really important. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's definitely studies is that, is that meditation meditators have more folds in their frontal lobe. That's, that's an actual, like uh, either Harvard or I think it's a Harvard study is that meditate meditators do use more of their brain and their brain stays health, healthier and there's less memory problems and dementia as you get older with regular people that meditate regularly. So it makes, um, sense. makes mm -hmm. sense. If you're mm -hmm. resting your brain, you know, you, you don't go to the gym and work out 24 seven. Yeah. You take you a break. Your, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to take a break. The body, yeah. the body, mind, the body and mind needs rest. Yeah. And even when you sleep, sure. you dream. So you're not necessarily getting a deep rest for your brain. And that's why meditation is, is a much deeper rest for your whole, entire physiology than sleep, than even the deepest sleep. And that's also a study. Yeah. And well. isn't it interesting that when we, um, I just thought of this now, when we go into um, our deep sleep, a lot of times it's right at the beginning of the night. And then at the, in the morning, when we wake up and we hit the snooze button and we go back some people do. I wake up on time now, but you know, most, a lot of people hit the snooze button and go back and then go really deep again. Well, it's interesting because when you do that deep dive, there's actual, you're getting some major deep sleep right there. Well, imagine if people were doing what you do when you wake up and you just sit up and get up and meditate for that little bit because you're going even deeper. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, that's, yeah, it's it gives you food for thought, hey? Wow. <laughs> Don't have to convince me, Ed. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, you've been practicing, practicing, practicing this for years. Yeah, I've been doing it for years. Very dedicated to it. Don't miss. Um, just because it was so, it was so valuable for me. I mean, literally it was phys physically, it cured my ulcer. And then also I had realized that I was not happy. Like I didn't have inner peace. I didn't realize what inner peace was or that I didn't have it. But after I started meditating, I got inner peace and I, I became happy and I, and I didn't real, I didn't. And this, so that was like invaluable to me. And then also I started understanding, you know, just the whole mechanics of self-inquiry and all that with all the meditation that I've done too, over the years too, of noticing that I'm my thoughts. So Let's talk and about, also, oh, go and ahead. also you fit it into your schedule. It's like you fit it into, you're brushing your teeth, you take your shower, you're making your breath. Like there's got to be a place in your day to, to, to put it. it. And, and it's interesting because once you've created that habit, um, even when we were in Sicily, there was times when 
I, I couldn't understand why you, when and why you wanted to meditate when you did. And when we were in Sicily, it was funny because I'm like, I didn't even think that you would notice, but I was like, Corinne, I think it's time we should, we should meditate here soon because my habit was formed. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, and it's not that I'm getting tired. It's just, I'm, my body is ready. For... Oh yeah. Your body and mind gets used to it. And yeah. some people will say, well, I'm more tired. They'll, they'll think when they first start meditating that they're more tired. But again, when you meditate, you notice what's already there. Usually people will push through, they'll have more caffeine in the afternoon, or they'll just kind of function at half mast and not realize how tired, tired they are. When you start meditating, you crave that rejuvenation and you do start to realize how tired you get in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, oh, I not... remember, I remember that I would love to have my coffee with caffeine in the morning. I don't even have caffeine in the morning. Yeah. I actually went to half and half and even in Sicily, the coffee and the shifting, like, and sometimes it might not even be the coffee that's shifting or the tea that's changing. It's you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've it's talked about that before. It's important. Yeah. Not to do things just because you've always done them just to check in with yourself, yeah, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I wanted to know. talk, give people clues. So we, we are going to do some meditations, but I do first want to talk about the different apps that are out there. First of all, you can contact me and I can teach you how to meditate. Um, I do that. I've got a little video zoom video that I send people that makes it easier um, to watch first. And then I do some one-on-one -on -one over zoom. If you don't live in Nashville or if, if I'm not in your area, so I've taught people to meditate when I go to Vancouver for Christmas, you know, when I travel, I'll teach meditation. I used to go to Edmonton and sing at churches and teach meditation there in San Diego, but you can reach out to me. I do love teaching meditation. You can put a little group together or, you know, you can always do that. Now, if you want to do start with a guided meditation, which is always a nice place to start, there's a, a few apps that are really good. So Insight Timer is one of our favorites, although they've changed things recently and I'm not sure how it is now. It's more of a paid app now. It used to be free for years. It's called Insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T Timer. They've got a lot of guided meditations on there, but they've got a nice little bell system that you can create your how long you want to meditate. I am not a big fan of music for meditation or of guided meditations, okay? Only because I started off with Transcendental Meditation years ago. I switched to then Deepak Chopra's meditation, Primordial Sound Meditation. I now just sit and can use a mantra or not. I'm just getting, you know, 35, 40 years of it. It's, I just sit and it's fine. But it's like people, they, it's almost like your, your mind needs a bone to chew on, right? And so- so listening to somebody else's voice is nice. Now, some people are, are going to be leading more guided meditations that are more at the level of the mind, which has a, a purpose and can be helpful and it can be a start. But if you do that regularly, right? First of all, regularity is the key. Most people I know that if they meditate once a day or they meditate three or four times a week, they'll eventually stop meditating altogether because you're not getting the benefits of it. It's kind of like, you know, going for training for a marathon. I remember when my sister trained for a marathon years ago, they literally start them with like a, a kilometer, like really a small amount, like half a mile, the first like five days, and then a mile, like they incrementally, you know, went upwards. And, and then, but if you, if you missed, like, if you started doing that, you'd see the benefits and you'd see the results of your getting easier with your marathon and your breathing and everything. And so you continue, you're, you're motivated. But if you say you went on vacation, if you're in the middle of that training and you come back and you frustrated because you're not seeing the results and you have to start over again, it's kind of like meditation. You're not going to see the full results if you're just meditating sporadically. That's one of the big reasons why people don't start meditating. So even if you just start with five or 10 minutes a day, once or twice a day, that's a great place to start. There's also the Calm app, the Headspace app. Um, I'm going to put links below. It, the Adi Ashanti is one of my favorite teachers who does amazing guided meditations on YouTube. They're just audios, but you just listen to them and, and they are anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes and in between. And he's my favorite because I find that he takes you really deep. Another favorite of mine is Tara Brock. It's B-R-A-C-H. She's amazing. She has some really helpful meditations, especially when the world um, is, is challenging. Uh, she has some really nice guided meditations to help you calm in, um, uh, when the, living in turbulent times. Yeah, those are good ones. 
I, I too enjoy the insight timer. I, I have a lot of patients come in and I, I link them to that one or, um, and a lot come in that they're using headspace or calm, or they're listening to different voices or music. And for me, music, um, interrupts me because as a musician, I'm, I'm trying to get, what's that music note? What are they, what key distracting? Is that in? Yeah. And, yeah. Next, thing you know, I'm humming it, you know? So I'm, I'm like, okay, I, I do like the silence and I like, you know, nature and I love hearing the natural sounds of my house or outside, but that even falls away. And, but music tends to, because the melodies change so much and the notes change, it, it's, Dist it's really distracting. Yeah, it's like it's distracting. Going down the road sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you so. will get to a point after you've been meditating for a while. Like Eddie, Eddie now can you can meditate anywhere, right? Even on anywhere. the plane, right? Yes. Anywhere. And I definitely do 30 minutes twice a day, you know, definitely. And I love to get 45 minutes in. And yeah. there's times an hour. Sometimes we've gone over an hour, but most of the time 30. You know, when people say what's average and I'm like 30 to 45 twice a day would be yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. But 30 right. twice a day, I definitely get in. And during the holidays too, you know, it changes because you could be on a vacation somewhere. I definitely get a longer meditation. Definitely. Yeah. Cause you've got more time, but when you yeah. were younger, you didn't, you would, you yeah. wouldn't take the time for meditation. That's, I find really hard for my students is when they're either on vacation or they're home for the holidays because their routine is disrupted and disrupted. And we talked about that in our, in our, one of our episodes, a few a few episodes ago about disrupted routines, mm -hmm. but I but used you know, to, but you know what Pe people now over 50 and 60, and they say they have more time in their retirement years. A lot don't they're busy again with grandkids and seniors and their lives are busy. So you still have to work that time in no matter what. I mean, you've got to prioritize it like anything yeah. else. When it's, it's, Deepak Chopra yeah. used to say, if you don't have, he, he used to say, I'm a pretty busy guy and <laughs> I make time to meditate, you know? Yeah. And I tell people that all the time. If you don't think you have time to meditate, you need to meditate longer. And, um, but people it's have a, to come to it when they're ready. Yep. And it's, it's the regular routine. You know, I tell, I tell my grandkids and I, I said this before that you only brush the teeth you want to keep. So <laughs> only meditate for the brain cells you want to keep. Nice. Yay, Eddie. <laughs> Yay. That's great. All right. So anything else we want to say about meditation? No, that we love it and just find what suits you. And there is no failing at it. There is no, I can't meditate. Everyone can meditate. There is nobody, there's not a contest. No one's better than the other one. You know, Corinne doesn't wear a badge of honor because she knows and she's good at it and she practices it and she teaches it. And she, you know, it's. Another Eddie's as good a meditator as I am. And you're listening right now. I promise you, you are as good a meditator as Eddie and I are also, because the technique is the same for all of us. You yes. sit down, you don't rest your head and you either repeat a mantra or focus on your breath, or you turn on your guided meditation. And that's, Just that's the technique for all of us. It's the, it. it's yeah. the acceptance of the process that I might be better at. And, and you, you get better at over time is you have less expectations about it. You yeah, allow we never and, ever say, well, we never ever say, whoa, that was a good one. Hey, <laughs> whoa, well, people bad do meditation. Whoa. Well, yeah. The only bad meditation is the one you don't do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that being said, thank you, Eddie, for discussing my favorite topic in the world. I meditation. know. I love it too. Yes. I love, it too. And I love that you love it now too. That was fun meditating with you on our trip. Yes. It was great. I love that you like eating some of the foods I love to eat too. Oh yeah. I feel so much better when I travel with you, whoever I hang out with you. Cause I mean, I'm a pretty good eater, but I'm even better when I'm with you. <laughs> That's funny. I'm a so, better meditator. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we like meditation. So let's go ahead and do a couple of different meditations. Again, you can mark uh, these meditations, um, the time in it, either on YouTube or on your podcast platform or I will at some point, not on the podcast platform, but on YouTube, I will put out just the meditations, um, a couple of different meditations. You can go to them and put them in your playlist if you like, if they're helpful for you. So the first meditation that we're going to do 
is just a five minute meditation. So, um, and it's for you to do over the holidays or any time you need to feel a little bit more grounding and a little acceptance. Maybe family is irritating you and you need a little bit more acceptance. Um, so you want to go ahead if you are, you can I mean, of course, if you're driving in your car, you can listen to it to hear what we're saying. But I also encourage you at some point to come back to this and sit comfortably. And that means doesn't mean cross-legged. It means comfortably. So you can sit and you can sit in a chair sitting up like you don't want to rest your head. That's the only rule that I have in meditation is not to rest your head. So you want to sit comfortably because if you're not comfortable, your mind's going to go to where um, your body's uncomfortable. So if your foot falls asleep or something, you can definitely move it. And you can get a little blanket or a pillow and put it on you. You soften your shoulders and you close your eyes. This is a closed eyed meditation. Okay, so if you're driving, you don't want to close your eyes. <laughs> this is a closed eyed meditation to help you with grounding yourself and acceptance of what is. Uh, if you soften your tongue in the back of your mouth, that helps to soften your jaw. Soften your shoulders. Feel your hands resting wherever they are. Notice your feet. And just begin to breathe in and out, noticing your breath. Notice your breath coming in through your nose, coolness of the air on the inhale, and a difference on the exhale. I want you to focus in on just the exhale if you can. Just the exhale. The inhale happens automatically. And just notice you exhale, there's this dropping in, this sinking, this grounding. Just allowing everything to be as it is. Allowing your thoughts to be as they are. Allowing your body to be as it is. Allowing sounds on the outside, the uh, sounds of your house or wherever it is you're sitting. And just feel yourself grounding into right here, right now. Your mind might wander for a moment and just come back to your breath. It's always going to be here and now back to the awareness of your feet it's always going to be here right here and now just allowing and accepting what's happening in your mind and your breath in this process of meditation this process of letting go and accepting if there's any tension in your mind or any questioning or tension in your body any, any part of you that's not sort of allowing the process to be whatever is happening if there's any expectations or thoughts of not allowing just even welcome those soften into those Whatever comes up, you're just breathing, noticing your breath, noticing your feet, grounding and accepting, softening and sinking. Your breath is always here an anchor into the present moment. Your 
your feet are also always here. There's no time machine in your breath or your feet like there is your mind. So using the awareness of these grounding forces within you. Just allowing the process, whatever's happening for you. Being very soft, very tender with yourself, with the process. shallow something might distract you for a moment it's okay come back to here and now very gently very tenderly very easy so slowly you're going to bring your awareness sort of back to more of the forefront of your mind notice noticing you can or noting that you can go back to that relaxed state whenever you decide to take a mindful moment for yourself and just being grateful for a moment before you open your eyes for having that five minutes to take just for you, just to pause, to pause to ground, pause to recenter, to pause to allow everything to be as it is. And then as you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. So we're going to go into another meditation now, another five-minute mini break. This is a mini break from your family or from anything that might be stressing you out that you just need a minute. And just remember, if you feel overwhelmed at any time with anyone, whether it's your children, your grandchildren, your sister, your relatives, you can always just say, I just need a minute. And you can go disappear, let somebody else stir the gravy, and take this five minutes. So find yourself a seated position. Just because laying down or resting your head means sleep, so you just want to sit with your head not resting, but comfy and cozy with a blanket or pillow is great. Up in, uh, sitting up in your bed is completely fine. Having your car door closed, your door locked in your car is completely fine. Wherever you can get five minutes for yourself. So, once again, giving yourself permission to be here and now. giving yourself permission to have this time just for you. You just need a few minutes to regroup. And if there's a thought that comes, I don't have a minute, that's just a thought. Come back to your breath. Come back to your body. Come back to listening to the sounds that are happening around you. So these thoughts sort of arise out of nowhere. And 
will leave unless you decide to follow them. It's almost like you're sitting on the banks of a river watching the river and the river is your thoughts. You're not jumping in to follow the river. You're not jumping in to follow your thoughts, but you just notice them. You notice the river. And you're also not jumping in and swimming against the currents, trying to stop anything. You're just being here now, noticing the river of thinking that might be happening, as well as the listening, and just being okay with that in this moment. Taking this mini break for yourself. If there's any thoughts or judgments that come up, you just allow them to be there, notice them, that's interesting, and come back to your breath and your body in this moment. This moment is my voice speaking to you. This moment is your breath breathing you. This moment is your body. All of your senses are always in the now because they're a part of your physical body. They don't have a time machine like your mind does. So you use your awareness of your body and your senses as an anchor for this mini break. So being aware of your sense of sight, even with your eyes closed, don't want you to open your eyes. Just with your eyes closed, noticing if you see darkness or see colors. Putting your awareness on your sense of sight, even with your eyes closed in your mind's eye. What is it that you see? You don't have to make a big story about it or a big explanation, just noticing. Turning your attention towards your mind's eye. And then noticing your sense of taste. How does your mouth feel right now? Does it feel wet or dry? Just noticing your mouth, your teeth, your saliva. Tuning into your next sense, your sense of smell. Sometimes if you've been in a room for a while, you don't, you can't distinguish the smells, but see if you can tune into any smells right now. Just noticing them without being too interested in them, just noticing. And then your sense of hearing. Tune into the sounds happening around you, wherever you are. There are so many sounds that we selectively tune out, but I want you to tune into any sounds happening in your space here and now. Finally, your sense of touch, your largest organ in your body. Noticing how your face feels differently, if your hair might be resting on it or your skin feels cool or warm. Notice the shirt on your body, your belt, your waistband, your bra if you have one, how your hands are resting, your pants, your socks, if you have any. Noticing your feet. So your awareness of your senses 
Sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell are your anchors into the present moment. You can use them during a meditation, a mini break. You can always use it too. It's just a way to bring yourself back to the present if you're ever lost in thought while you're cooking or lost in thought while you're driving. This is a good grounding technique. Bringing your awareness back to the forefront. And just having a sense of gratitude right now for yourself for taking this time. And as you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. You can open them at a soft focus first, and then as you're ready, open them. No rush. Noticing how you feel differently now than you did before the meditation. This next meditation is going to be a little bit longer. I'm going to do a 10-minute meditation on letting go. So finding a place where it's easy to sit comfortably and close your eyes. And just gently close your eyes and give yourself a moment to arrive. A moment to arrive here and now. Your body's here and now, but your mind might need a little bit more coaxing. So again, you're not trying to do anything. You're just sort of having a very easy and gentle approach to this. The theme of this meditation is letting go. Letting go of expectations, letting go of judgments, letting go of any grievances you have, just being here now. It's like before you sat down doesn't exist and the future doesn't exist either. See if you can just have the intention of just being here now. And the thought might flow into your awareness about what happened today or what's going to happen later and just come back and have more importance on right here right now and your anchor for this meditation is going to be the awareness of your breath so just noticing as you breathe in and breathe out not changing your breath not breathing deeper just noticing your breath that breathes you without thinking about it, without trying or efforting. Just notice your breath that comes in so effortlessly and goes out so effortlessly. This is how really life should be as easy as your breath breathing you breath that keeps you alive, keeps you on this planet that was the first thing you did when you came into this world. The last thing you'll do when you leave this world. Notice your breath as you're breathing in and breathing out. Putting more importance on the breathing out breath, on the exhale, the letting go breath. Letting go of grievances, letting go of expectations, disappointments, judgments and fears. Just being here and now in this moment with your breath, with my voice, breathing in and breathing out. Notice 
noticing the exhale. The inhale will happen automatically. You don't have to even try or think about it. It might seem kind of weird to focus on the exhale and just notice that. Just put more importance on the exhale. Just noticing there's nothing to do. If you find it challenging, just see if you can find the ease in that. Welcome the challenge. Noticing that exhale, that letting go breath. That allowing everything to be as it is breath. Noticing on the exhale, there's a dropping, a sinking. It might become heavier, more shallow. There's nothing, no straining, no forcing, just the exhale. As you get comfortable with the exhale, you might get comfortable with letting go of grievances, with letting go of hurts, with letting go of judgment, anything that you feel like you might be holding on to. Just having this invitation to be here now, having the now in your breath, in your letting go breath being more important than and anything that comes into your mind. anything becomes strained or difficult you can always go back to focusing on both the inhale and the exhale but the intention is to just find the exhale a little more interesting nothing more than that be a little more curious with the exhale like a dropping in it tends to change over the minutes of the meditation inviting softness and tenderness into your meditation if any thoughts come or any sounds disturb just notice those and then come back to your exhale that exists, exists right now is your breath. When a thought comes, it's just a thought, it comes and goes. You don't have to follow it or make it important. You can notice it and that's okay. Even if there's an uncomfortable thought that is more interesting, you notice that it has more energy, it's more interesting. And then just gently, with ever so much ease, come back to being curious of your exhale. It's just happening. Your thoughts just happen. Your breath just happens. It's 
it's you that gets to decide how important your breath is, how important this meditation is, and how you're letting go and allowing everything to be as it is in this moment. there's any uncomfortable or sticky thoughts, just acknowledge and come back to your breath. Even if you notice you're wondering when this meditation is going to end, that's just a thought as well. It's okay. Come back to your breath. The exhale. Letting go, dropping in. Sinking in. Tenderness. Softening of your eyes. Softening of your being. And then gently bringing your awareness back to the forefront. Getting ready for life to begin again, movement to begin again. And just for a moment before you open your eyes, just acknowledging this time you've taken for yourself. Your precious time. Deep gratitude in your heart for this time for you. And you can start to open your eyes at a very soft focus, just being very gentle. As you're ready, you can open your eyes a little more. Just noticing how colors might feel, look brighter right now, how you've, my eyes might feel more rested. Your whole being might feel more rested and enjoy the rest of your day or evening.